Uh, yeah, it gets pretty humid. It gets pretty humid. When the rain's coming down. It just comes out of fucking nowhere and it'll start thundering, then it pours. Everything floods. Scorpions start invading. So, I decided that um, instead of going back through Mass Effect 1, we're just going to go through uh, Mass Effect 2. And I also decided I'm going to play Mass Effect 3, because I think I went through Adept on Mass Effect 3 instead of going Vanguard. Uh, I did not go Vanguard because of the bugs that were in Mass Effect 2 with Vanguard, but... Um, I want to play through Mass Effect 3 as a Vanguard, so I'm going to do that one after this. I'm sure you'll get plenty of them throughout the stream. Not mean, Doug? <laughs> Why would I say that? Okay, so check this out. We've got a lot to talk about. Oh, Renegade all the way. I made a mistake by not going Renegade in the first one, but holy shit, Mass Effect is a great game. And... Mm, I just have a hard time not saving the world. So, as you can see, I've played around with Mass Effect saves the website, which is super, super cool. Uh, I believe I have every possible bit of DLC for this game. There shouldn't be anything that I don't have. I've bought fucking everything. Uh, or whenever it was that it came out. How old is Mass Effect 2? What, eight, six to eight years? Something like that? Um, pretty fucking old. But I have everything. If I don't have it, then... Yeah, that's the worst part about Amy 3. Was Liara turning crazy. Um, so this is what we're rolling with. I there were some perks to um, there were some perks to Mass Effect Two, depending on how you finish Mass Effect One. I thought there was something to do with hitting max level, and there was something to do with getting above a million credits. But I didn't hit sixty, so this is where we finished. We finished to level forty-three. <laughs> My god, we got our teeth kicked in so hard. Um, and so I downloaded a few of these, because I just want to make sure we get whatever the benefits are. The dunked on video? Oh my god, my girlfriend actually showed me that one for the first time. I hadn't, hadn't seen his shit in a while. That was fucking funny. Have you seen that, Froggy Fresh? <laughs> Why is my cry? Because it just got dunked! <sighs> I'm fucking crying. I just watched it. It was pretty funny. There's also an issue in Mass Effect 2 with uh, the control or the uh, the mouse. Um. The mouse moves really, really, really fast in Mass Effect 2. Um, I actually had to go into my settings and I adjusted some of my DPI settings on my mouse. I remember when I did my original playthrough, I had to uh, play with all that shit too, because the mouse uh, is just a shitty PC, PC port. So we'll go back to Insanity. Hopefully we don't get our teeth kicked in. Um, Auto level up off, subtitles, got those. Squad powers, no, we want to use them. Auto save, of course. So this is um, this is what this character, he hit level 60. Uh, he finished it as Adept. Psych profile, he finished it as Renegade. <laughs> Status of Rex, Rex survive, which is awesome. Caden Alenka was killed, which is perfect. He's a boring piece of shit. And the council was saved.
Shepard did everything right. More than we could have hoped for. Commander Shepard uncovered the truth. And still it's not enough. We're at war. No one wants to admit it, but humanity is under attack. But they're sending him to fight Geth. Geth. We both know they're not the real threat. The Reapers are still out there. And it's up to us to stop them. The Council will never trust Cerberus. They'll never accept our help. Even after everything humanity has accomplished. But Shepard... They'll follow him. He's a hero, a bloody icon. But he's just one man. If we lose Shepard, humanity might well follow. Then see to it that we don't lose him. Dun, 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 dun. So... Oh, man, we've got a lot to talk about. We've got a lot to talk about. It's gonna be a little loud, we might have to turn it down. Let me know if it's too loud for you guys. Just give it a few minutes and let me know what you think. If there wasn't a Vanguard bug and the controller wasn't shithouse, or the mouse and keyboard wasn't, then I would say whatever, it's all good. It would probably be the best. Yo, yo! Disengaging FTL drives. Emission sinks active. Board is green. We are running silent. We're wasting our time. Four days searching up and down this sector, and we haven't found any sign of Geth activity. Three ships went missing here in the past month. Something happened to them. My money's on slavers. The Terminus system is crawling with them. Picking up something on the long-range scanner. Unidentified vessel. Hmm. Looks like a cruiser. Doesn't match any known signatures. Cruiser is changing course. Now on intercept trajectory. Sorry, Bob Zanny. Stealth systems are engaged. There's no way a Geth ship could possibly. It's not the Geth. Brace for evasive maneuvers! Presley! Ah! Kinetic barriers down! Multiple hull breaches! Weapons offline! Somebody get that fire out! The only so I'll show you guys here in just a sec. <laughs> That's such a terrible. So 
So I'll show you where is the uh, the input. So this is your mouse. You this is the choices you get for mouse speed. You get low, medium, or high. There's no in between. It's just low, medium, or high. And it doesn't matter which one you choose because it's super fucking fast no matter what. There, that's a little more manageable. Thank you, thank you. It's good. Good to be heard. <laughs> But the, in my opinion, I mean, the difference between Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2 is ME1 was a PC game, and Mass Effect 2 was a console game that was ported to PCs. I remember uh, remember chatting about it, worrying this was going to be the case, and it was. I think it plays much, much, much better on consoles. I almost fired up my Xbox. I was just going to buy it for Xbox to play it, but I wasn't going to go back and buy all the DLC or anything, so I just said, fuck it. And playing with your DPI makes uh, makes it okay. Come on, Joker. We have to get out of here. No, I won't abandon the Normandy. I can still save her. The Normandy's dead. Just like us, we don't get the hell out of here. No, we just have to. Oh no. They're coming around for another attack. RIP and pepperonis. Ah, uh, no. I'm going to apply for the sub button later today, though. Apply for a partnership and see where that takes us. We'll get some, uh... You guys will get your first taste of uh, YouTube vids this week. And then, hopefully, the first, uh... Down the rabbit hole in a few weeks. And just more and more as time goes on. Articles on the website obviously goes out saying. I actually threw up a new article today about uh, 2014-2015 titles. So if you guys haven't already Just seen it, feel free to mission. Why do they always say that before? Comment on that. Of course, it's routine. You haven't done anything yet. It's everything that happens along the way, the choices you make, the paths you choose, that turn the routine into anything but. Of course, that's how it started. A routine mission. Answering a distress call. And look where that got me. We were testing out the Normandy, Captain Anderson's new ship, when the distress call came in. An Alliance patrol on Eden Prime had been attacked. They'd seen something they couldn't explain. And whatever it was, it was massive. I hit the ground with my lieutenant, Caden Olenko. A good kid. Loyal. By the book, Boring as fuck. with a talent for biotics, we came across the lone survivor of the patrol, Gunnery Chief Ashley Williams, a soldier to the core, tough, disciplined, ready to take on whatever came her way. Ashley joined up with us and took us to the spot where she lost her squad. That's when we saw it. The ship. Like nothing I'd ever seen. It was massive. Scorching the colony and everything around it as it blasted away. We followed the path of destruction to an artifact. A beacon left by a long dead race called the Protheans. The colony had dug it up and whoever attacked them had tried to take it. Chief Williams made the mistake of getting too close. It hit her with some type of energy. I grabbed her and threw her out of the way. And that's when it hit me. 
hard. Yeah, this is the DLC. My body went rigid. I couldn't move. Could barely breathe. Everything went black. And then I saw something. A vision. A dream. A nightmare. By the time I woke up, we were halfway to the Citadel on our way to meet the Council. I was expected to explain what I'd seen. Anderson came along. So did Adina, our political representative on the Citadel. With those two heavyweights, it seemed reasonable we could persuade the Council that the ship we'd seen was a potential threat. As was the individual behind the attacks. The main suspect for the Eden Prime Massacre was a Turian Spectre named Saren. He'd been seen by one of the survivors from the colony at Eden Prime. And there was some evidence to suggest that the ship was connected to Saren. But even Adina's pointed accusations I love you too, to the Council. They just couldn't believe one of their chosen elite Spectres could be guilty of something like that. They needed proof. Which meant I needed proof. Fortunately, I wasn't alone in my search. Garrus, another Turian, wanted to help. A top agent for Citadel security. Despite orders from his superiors that he shouldn't get involved, he told me he was suspicious of Saren, and he had some useful leads. More importantly, he was willing to share them. That led me to Rex, the biggest, nastiest looking Krogan bounty hunter I'd ever seen. He turned out to be more than just a brute. It was his intel that led to a fugitive with incriminating evidence on Sarah. The fugitive turned out to be an energetic little quarian named Tally. A tech expert with a knack for hacking, she'd procured some information on Saren. Evidence that proved Saren was dirty. Dirty. Tally's evidence proved that Saren was responsible for the massacre on Eden Prime, and that the immense warship we'd spotted was in fact Saren's flagship. But it went much further. Saren was trying to find a way to bring back a race of sentient machines from dark space. Machines allegedly responsible for cleansing the galaxy of all organic life. These Reapers were blamed for wiping out all life 50,000 years ago, including the Protheans, then disappearing back through the mass relays to dark space, leaving no trace they'd ever been. That explained why Saren was after the beacon, and it made some sense out of my visions, but not much else. We couldn't convince the Council that the Reapers were a threat, but they agreed Saren had to be stopped. They stripped him of his Spectre status and gave me the honor of becoming the first human Spectre. My first task? Bring down Saren. Anderson decided to stay behind. Jesus, a lot of dialogue. Normandy. He told me I would need it more than he would. He also pointed me in a direction. Liara. A Prothean expert. Hey and maybe most importantly, Daughter of Benezia, Saren's top lieutenant. And like most Asari, as beautiful as she is intelligent, and born with a unique ability to meld with other species. Liara was able to help me decipher some of the vision the beacon had given me. Nothing concrete, but it gave me some clues. And a new appreciation for the Asari. Her technique for accessing my vision was unexpected, but not at all unpleasant. Mm -hmm. Ashley was a little concerned about the connection I shared with Liara. As commander, I knew either relationship <laughs> had the potential to interfere with the mission. I told Liara about how I felt. Apparently, she'd felt it too. But we agreed we wouldn't let it get in the way of our mission. Finding Saren. Thanks to Liara's help, we had our next lead. Benezia. Saren had taken her to Novarian where he'd enslaved a dangerous race of insect-like creatures, the Rachni. He ordered Benezia to use the same technique Liara had used on me to extract information from the Rachni Queen. The Queen's drones were everywhere, and they weren't happy. We had to fight through hundreds of them to get to Benezia. By the time we arrived, Saren was gone. With the information, I tried to reason with Benezia, but Saren had indoctrinated her. He had somehow acquired the ability to control people's actions and wills. Benezia wouldn't surrender, and Liara was forced to watch her mother die in her arms. And I was left with an angry, dangerous Rachni queen to deal with. She claimed her drones would do no harm if I released her. But the Rachni had terrorized the galaxy before. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't doom an entire species for past sins. And the queen was true to her word. She left and took her army of drones with her. 
With Saren's top lieutenant dead, he was quickly running out of time and places to hide. I tracked him down at his base on Vermeer, but we soon learned it was more than a base of operations. It was a breeding ground. Saren was breeding an army of Krogan. He'd found a cure for the genophage, a disease inflicted on the Krogan to prevent them from breeding and taking over the galaxy. But the Krogan Saren was breeding were slaves, mindless beasts that obeyed Saren's will. I had to destroy the base and all its research. Rex disagreed, violently. Rex wanted the genophage cure for his people. I tried to convince him to help me destroy it, but these Krogan weren't <laughs> real. But he wouldn't back down. Oh, you guys are such turds. Fortunately, Rex is smarter than he looks. He realized this wasn't the way to help his people, and that Saren was the real threat. When we finally got to the center of the base, I realized just how close Saren was to completing his plan. He was already in communication with the Reapers. Sovereign, Saren's flagship we'd all assumed was just a ship was a reaper. It spoke to me. Threatened me. I could feel the menace it had for every living thing. It wanted me dead. It wanted us all dead. And I knew it was capable of doing just that. What I couldn't understand was why Saren would help it. But there was no time to think about it. Sovereign knew where we were. We had to destroy the base and get the hell out. I split up my team in two squads, sending Ash with one and Caden with the other as a distraction. We had a nuke, and we planned to use it. Before we could detonate the bomb, Saren showed up. We fought. I stalled him to make time for my team. And in talking to him, I realized the truth. It wasn't Saren who was indoctrinating everyone. It was Sovereign. The Reaper. And Saren was in deeper than all of them. He tried to convince me he was still in control. Said he found a way to reduce the Reaper's influence, <laughs> but he was kidding himself. Or believing the lies Sovereign was telling him. Before I could convince him to stop, he ran. Leaving me just seconds to extract my squad mates. I tried. But I wasn't fast enough. I could only save one of them. Caden was a good man. And a great soldier. But I had to choose. And I chose Ash. That was the last time Saren would slip away from me. I knew then, the next time we met, Fucking one of us kidding. would die. With my team mostly intact, we chased Saren and his army to Ilos, a long-lost planet that had once belonged to the Protheans. As we prepared for what we knew would be a desperate fight, I spoke to my crew. We were just one ship, against Saren's growing army. I assured them all that despite the odds, we could defeat him. Liara saw through my words. She knew I was hurting after Caden's death. She could sense my doubts. We both knew this mission could be our last. Until that moment, we'd put our feelings aside for the sake of that mission. But why wait? We gave in to each other. And it was perfect. While it lasted. While it lasted. We arrived on Ilos, close behind Saren. Once on the planet, we discovered a Prothean databank that helped me put the final pieces of my vision together. The Reapers had come 50,000 years ago, and every 50,000 years before that, each time purging the galaxy of life. We already talked the about Protheans it. Prothians had too fought fast. and died, like every species before them. But a few survived long enough to leave a parting gift. The Protheans had discovered that the Citadel was the key to controlling the mass relays. By sabotaging the Citadel, they found a way to close the relays to dark space, slowing the Reaper's return, giving us the time we needed to find a solution to stop the Reapers once and for all. Saren knew this. He was leading his army to take control of the Citadel and re-establish the relays to dark space, bringing the waiting Reapers here to destroy us all. We followed him to the Citadel. It was intact, but heavily damaged. He had caught the council fleets by surprise and uh, I don't remember Gareth doing shooter. that when I had There was little hope the fleets could counterattack with enough strength to take back the Citadel. But Saren was done running. And I was done chasing him. As the Alliance and Citadel fleets battled Saren's army outside, I cornered the Turian bastard in the Citadel Tower and confronted him. He died believing that the Reapers would save him. As I fought to regain control of the Citadel, 
the Council's flagship, the Destiny Ascension, fell under attack. Despite Saren's death, Sovereign and Saren's army continued to fight. The Council was aboard the Destiny Ascension, and they were requesting assistance. But I knew in order to help them, I would have to put our Human Alliance fleet in jeopardy. The Council had to be saved. They represented the hearts and minds of the galactic community. Without them, the fleets would be in disarray. Even with the Citadel back in my control, Saren defeated, and the Normandy leading the combined galactic fleet, the battle against Sovereign, a single Reaper, was relentless. It took the combined fleets of humanity and the other races, but in the end, Sovereign fell. But the costs were immense. While humanity's efforts in the war earned us our first seat on the Council, it was a hollow victory. The Reapers were still out there. I knew the fight was far from over, but as the one who'd led the fight against Saren, I was given new responsibilities. The choice of humanity's first counselor was left for me to decide. On the one hand, Adina, the lifetime politician. Ruthless and ambitious, he would easily navigate the political landmines that would soon be put in front of him. The other choice, Captain Anderson, the career soldier. Tough but fair, but a friend, and someone I could trust. Both great leaders in their own right. Mm, mm, mm. You're gonna be building a PC, what games you should do? You should get Steam, and you can get anything. <laughs> you thought we were done. Anderson didn't want the job, which was a sure sign he'd be perfect for it. No ambition to get in the way. The war was over. The threat had passed. In time, the Council would rebuild itself. The Citadel could be repaired. 